Hello, my name is Kathleen Elliott, and I want to share with you some helpful hacks for working in Stukin's Mimic Social Program version put out for the fall 2022 semester. All scenarios will start on a screen that looks similar to this. Where the red circle is will show you what round you're on. The blue circle tells you how much money you have to spend for the round, and the green circle, the number, shows you what you have left to spend. As you buy images and services for your campaign, this number will reduce. At the red arrow, you'll see the Run Simulation button. The Run Simulation button is the last thing you will do after you have spent your campaign money and have all of the campaign elements scheduled and ready to go. Ignore that button for now. Notice in the bottom right hand corner a tab for Scenario Overview and Resources. You need to be familiar with what's in both. Before you hit continue, listen to the video. The VP of Marketing will have some important information for you. The next page will take you to some questions to answer. Then you'll hit continue again and you'll be ready to start the simulation. Under that resource tab, you will see these four new tabs. Right off the bat, you need to get to the Bowie social media audit page. The social media audit also has the age ranges and gender split for each platform. For rounds one through three, you're basically learning who is hanging out on each platform. In rounds four through six, you'll actually choose an age range for the audience you develop. There are some decisions to make, such as in this Facebook audience range, is it 25 to 44 year olds, or is it wider and the 18 to 54 year olds? Generally speaking, inclusive is better. In student world, genders are male and female, so start to think about this program as student world. If you thought more females are on Facebook than males, start to challenge your perceptions versus what the impartial data tells you. For example, this data set tells you that in certain age ranges, more males are on Facebook than females. All along the way, you'll be encouraged to spend all of the money for each campaign, if at all possible. And I thought I'd go through really quickly here just to show you what I think about how easy that was to do. All of this will make more sense as you go through this video and you go through the ad campaigns. So just bear with that this is just generally what I think and um, so that you have some sort of expectation. In rounds one through three, it's difficult, or I found it difficult to spend all of the money, but it was good. You're only charged the one initial fee to buy the image, and then you can use it as many times as you want. And this is a really fun round set. In rounds four through six, it was easy to spend the money and good. You can use already purchased images or buy new. You'll also designate an amount to spend each day for the week. This was my favorite round set. On round seven through nine, it was easy to spend all of the money and bad. You'll spend all your money on overpriced influencers very quickly for little to no return. I'm mentioning it here because I just don't want you to get discouraged by rounds seven through nine. On rounds 10 through 12, it's sort of difficult until you understand you need, still need seven to 12 of each type of post on each platform. It's also sort of difficult if you've already managed to purchase a lot of the good images. You're going to post your media on each platform. I recommend, and I think I saw it somewhere in Stukin, to post 7 to 12 times per week per platform. You need to choose when to post your media by day and time. Find the social media audit page and find the analytics, this blue graph, for each platform. This is the analytics for Facebook. The darkest blue squares represent the days and times with the highest engagements. They want you to consider these days and times as having had the highest engagements and make your own decisions about when to post accordingly. It's kind of a pain as you have to go through each calendar and each clock time, but keep track of what you're doing and you'll be good to go. In Stukit World, your job boils down to three things. You're going to pick a platform, pick images, pick words, 
put them into a funnel, and if you've done everything well, you'll produce conversions. One issue you may get frustrated with is the images seem limited for your particular slogan or intent. I believe the specific images they have are tied to their algorithm. Take heart that they're enough to get the job done, and the intent isn't necessarily to forward your personal business campaign, but to objectively teach you about the elements of a good image, like whether there's a person in the shot, or whether the shot looks professional with good lighting and crisp images, that type of thing. In rounds one through three, you'll need to create a sales pitch, and you may have no idea how to start. Why not Google it? I googled Christmas ad slogans and, quote, important dates in November, unquote. I googled holidays in October and found out October 25th is I Care About You Day. Totally random, but I used it to develop a slogan. You'll have different sales images in Stukin, like Veterans Day and Black Friday. Remember those and use them when the time is right. Just pick a word or phrase like winter slogans or whatever time frame you're in. Maybe you're taking this class in the spring. Whatever comes up on Google, it may give you ideas for slogans and hashtags. It seemed like when I used a number into my slogan, I did better. It didn't even matter what number it was, meaning if I offered 20% off, it didn't do any better than when I put 50% off. It may seem obvious as I explain it here, but this is in hindsight. Try and make sure your slogans have some sort of specific discount or sale identified by number. It seems like there were words that frequently did better, so I used them a lot. They go along with the number concept from the earlier slide. Honestly, at first I thought, oh, how conventional, how boring, but it's Stukit world. It's social media marketing, and this is what's out there. This drives conversions, so we'll use it. These are words I took from the customer targets under the market tab under scenario overview. In a separate video I made on developing an audience, I go into more detail on this, but just quickly here, don't forget to add interest words to your slogans, audience description, and hashtags. This is in addition to the number and must have words in your sales pitch. If you right click on your mouse, you'll find emojis. Don't forget about emojis. They can make your sales pitch more engaging. You will get holiday reminders for most of the holidays, but I think they forget to remind about Black Friday, which they do have images for. Just don't forget to look at your real calendar for ideas and to use the available images to drive sales when you can. An Easter egg is Kwanzaa holiday. They have images for it. When looking for images to choose, you will see a tab for infographics. I didn't even know what infographics were. At least this context threw me off. Back to Google and I got this definition. An infographic example is a visual representation of information. Infographics examples include a variety of elements such as images, icons, texts, charts, and diagrams to convey a message at a glance. Don't discount using them just because they look a little bizarre, meaning you can't really see what it is. It's not the actual infographic. Student has put them there as a concept and go ahead and try using one if you think it fits your platform and audience. Every round you work on, especially rounds one through three and 10 through 12, will have you looking at these graphs, which you will find under resources. You can see the dark blue squares are the areas of highest engagement. These graphs do not change. This is the graph for Facebook. They have a graph for each of the platforms. When you plan to schedule a campaign, plan to schedule them on the days and times of the darkest squares for the highest engagement. Somewhere in all of the intel, Stukit recommends 7 to 12 posts per week. That is 7 to 12 posts on Facebook and 7 to 12 posts on Instagram, your biggies. You'll likely not have enough money to post a bunch on YouTube, although it's a good place for infographics and previously purchased videos. I'm not sure I'd recommend 7 to 12 posts there, however. I also wouldn't recommend spending a bunch of time on Pinterest, Twitter, or LinkedIn, although I wouldn't ignore them entirely. 
First, you're going to decide on your image. You will see free images, but I recommend buying obvious professional images when you can. Second, you will choose your platforms, likely spending most of your resources on Facebook and Instagram. Schedule your campaigns on the peak times of highest engagement. You will be prompted to try and spend all of your money. Don't go crazy and overpost on any particular platform. This will create ad fatigue. If you have more money to spend, go back and consider a better picture, not more posts. Rounds four through six are your sponsored posts. As far as the ease of spending your money and posting, these are my favorite rounds. You can use prior purchased media and or purchase new. You will decide how much money to spend per day and the program will automatically calculate the expense. The program will also automatically schedule your posts. I didn't use video until round four and I honestly can't remember if that was because of the budget or because YouTube wasn't available until then. That said, do not discount using video on whatever platform the subject matter fits. I had great success using video on both YouTube and Instagram. Let's go back to this main screen and now click on Scenario Overview and look for your market. Rounds four through six want you to develop an audience, and this is where you'll find helpful information to do that. I have a separate video on how to build an audience, so I will just hit the highlights here. You are still creating a campaign with words, numbers, and images. You will develop an audience by choosing the gender, ages, and interest words. There's a drop-down box to select a call to action, and you will decide the amount of money per day to spend on each of your campaigns. There may be other elements that I've forgotten since I'm doing this by me memory, but these are the biggies. Again, please see my video on building an audience for greater detail on how to do that. It may or may not be interesting to you, but after every round, you can go to rank the ranking button and see how you rank compared to your classmates. I failed hard on round three because I got super distracted by the fact they stressed the need to look at last week's analytics. I looked at my own last week's analytics for this round, and I recommend not doing that. It doesn't even make sense now that I have hindsight. For example, I posted a bunch of Veterans Day sales stuff on the specific day of the week Veterans Day fell for me. Why would I focus specifically on those particular days the current week unless it made sense for me to do that for some other reason? Stick to what Stukent says from the beginning on their social media audit page as far as the days and times to post on Facebook, etc. Again, I tried to use my own last week's data and whether I got confused or distracted or it just wasn't what I was supposed to do, I'm not sure. When I went back to do what Stukent said from the beginning on their social media audit page, as far as days and times to post on platforms, I went back to doing pretty well. Stick to what Stukent says from the beginning on their social media audit page, audit page as far as the days and times to post. I went back to the Stukent media times and days and got back on track. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on rounds seven through nine, <clears throat> excuse me, because I have an entire video detailing the sadness of these rounds. In rounds seven through nine, you have $5,000 to employ mega, macro, and mini influencers. You will choose an influencer and then do your best to guess what strategy they prefer. After you pick a strategy, you will offer them money to post to engage them. Watch that you put the money in the money field and the post in the post field, like when you're typing in. And also know that you have three times to bid before the influencer will not work for you anymore. Stukin does have some extra resources if you ask. I did not find them helpful. I was told Stukin made changes on this round for fall 2022, and the changes made the entire round set a total gamble. It's unfortunate because obviously I really like the Stukent platform 
um, program um, and you don't get to spend any time on the product for round seven through nine as far as I'm concerned. I had mega influencers do one post for 3000 and micro do one post for 750. It takes no time at all to blow through $5,000. The only advice I have is to roll the dice and do your best. Ask your teacher to reset the round a bunch of times if they'll do that for you. Process of elimination may help you score some conversions. Stukent does regularly update their program, and so if it's not just me and it's the program, hopefully they'll make some changes to this round set and you'll have a great experience working with it like the other rounds. Rounds 10 through 12 bring us back to a happy Stukent world. You will repeat the actions of rounds 1 through 3, 4 through 6, and 7 through 9. I spent 30 seconds scheduling what I did on rounds seven through nine on the influencer portion here and focused my time, energy, and money on the organic social posts and the paid social media posts. All of the same rules apply that applied then apply now. You do have to develop your audience again for rounds four through six. They do not save and carry over. Also, the money may throw you off just do each set as you did before with 7 to 12 posts per platform for each of the other sets. Spend as much money as you can and have some fun doing it. Don't forget the week that they said you're in. When I did round 10, it was the week before Christmas in Stukent World, so there were Christmas, Kwanzaa, and winter sales. Also, don't forget to use video. You should also have enough money to try all of the platforms. Previously, I didn't have much success in Pinterest, Twitter, or LinkedIn. I had enough money here to try them out. Just remember, you don't want to spend more money than you make. So if you've had platforms that did not perform well before, don't throw a bunch of money at them now here either. The program rem remains pretty consistent. This is just a suggestion, but after spending all of that time looking at your campaigns and thinking about it, I recommend just going back through and making sure that you have the right number of posts that you actually want before you push that run simulation button. Thank you for hanging in there. I've loved playing with the Stukit program, but didn't feel there was a lot of direction. Partly that's the point to learn, but some sections may not be very intuitive. These are just my personal opinions. They may or may not be correct. Hopefully something here helps you. Please share your own experiences and hacks in the comments below. Most of all, have a happy time and good luck in Stukent World.